Does every vote count equally under the Electoral College? This is an issue that has been brought up into our political discussions each time a presidential candidate does not win the popular vote, but wins the Electoral College. Is it important to our democracy that every vote counts equally? Our elected officials have divided opinions on this issue, and as the 2020 election intensifies, so are the discussions about this issue. Are we in a crossroad on what many candidates look at as the road to 270? The Electoral College is how the United States elects its president. According to Professor Emeritus of History at Columbia University, Eric Foner, the Electoral College was created because the Founding Fathers were trying to give more representation to the southern states that had a high number of slaves with the Three-Fifths Clause. All 50 states have electoral votes allocated based on their population. If a candidate wins a majority of the votes in that state, they win all the electoral votes for that state, except for Nebraska and Maine, where it's based on how a candidate performs in their congressional districts. The first candidate who wins 270 electoral votes becomes president. States like Rhode Island, Alabama, and Massachusetts in the past few election cycles are considered safe states since they consistently vote for the same party no matter who the candidate is. Swing states like Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida flip back and forth and switch to another party's candidates every other election cycle. So what are some of the pros and cons of the Electoral College? Honoring the historical compromise that existed and continuing that. There is at least some power given to the smaller states. And historically, if you go back to the, the time of our, our, our founding fathers, there was always the concern, and it was prescient, that one delegation or one cadre or one group of individuals would overwhelm the others. And so this has, gives the opportunity for a small state like Rhode Island to have and to maintain some type of say in the election of our president. The cons, obviously, it's just an antiquated system. Every other major country in the world has a popularity vote. We firmly believe in the majority rules, and people are bothered by the concept that someone could win without getting the majority of voters. There is a lot of controversy that surrounds the Electoral College. A good example of this is occasionally when a candidate wins the Electoral College, but not the popular vote. There have been four presidents elected this way, and John Quincy Adams who did not win either the popular vote or the Electoral College, which was decided in a tiebreaker vote in the U.S. House of Representatives. The current significance of the Electoral College did not come into our political discussions until the 2000 election between George W. Bush and Al Gore. Bush won the presidency narrowly in a 271 to 266 Electoral College victory. However, he lost the popular vote. The results had Gore winning with nearly 51 million votes to Bush's nearly 50 and a half million votes. This close election was decided by Florida. Since it was very close, this created controversy with many recounts and a Supreme Court case that was decided in Bush's favor, which awarded him the presidency. 16 years later, after the 2016 election, the Electoral College is back into our political spotlight. We have to acknowledge that the election cycle, the presidential election cycle of 2016, was probably one of the most unique in the history of our nation. The fact that we had that happen, uh, where, where there was such a disparity between the popular vote and the electoral college vote, and that people were actually surprised. I think not even the president himself thought that he might win. And, uh, there's a lot of people uh, for whom then this topic became very important. Each side was so invested in their candidate. Defeat was almost unacceptable to each side. People who are against the Electoral College argue that only a few states determine the presidential election. These states are Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, where candidates spend more time and money. States like Rhode Island that only have four electoral votes won't get as much attention from a presidential candidate as much as a state in the Rust Belt. What could be done to ensure a voter in a state like Rhode Island's vote will count as much as any voter in any of the Midwestern swing states? You wouldn't have as much bang for the buck as you actually do get now. Our four electoral votes actually count for more than they do uh, if we went to national popular vote. They wanted them to also go to rural and smaller states, and that's why a state, no matter how small their population, gets three electoral college votes. I would suggest getting behind a candidate in hopes of uh, having a louder voice and talking to these swing states that um, you know, could come down to uh, just a couple of votes. In this election cycle, we have seen a number of states make efforts to abolish the Electoral College. This would require a constitutional amendment process which requires a lot of support that is unlikely to happen in our current political landscape. 
What would truly be an effective way to elect our president if the Electoral College were abolished? I would suggest to some states maybe that win or not take all, where there is a county or regional vote. What we can do eventually is to change it to a straight out popular vote. We need to reform our election system to have a system of instant runoff voting. Instant runoff voting would be that if no one gets a majority on the first ballot, then the person with the least first votes is eliminated and the uh, votes are reapportioned based on that person's second choice. There are many arguments on whether or not the Electoral College should be abolished and if it is an outdated system. This film's purpose is not to answer that question, but rather to explain this issue, the questions that come with it, its importance in deciding the election of the country's highest office, and to call on our 2020 presidential candidates to address it. The 2020 presidential candidates should focus on this issue that no one is addressing, so that voters can feel confident that their vote counts equally.